Come and take it if you want it. Come and take it if you think you can. Come and take it, but I warn you, you'll have to buy it from a cold dick. All right, Southern Republic back at you again with part two of my ultimate bug out bag build. So in the last video, we talked about choosing the right bag and the concept of redundancy. So we're gonna take that concept of redundancy and we're gonna transition into my medical kits. Again, medical kits, redundant, more than one. So let's start here. So we got one kit, two kits. So we're gonna start with what I call my mini medical kit. And as you can see here, it is I don't know what do you call it um vacuum sealed so i went ahead and i actually wrote on here put a piece of paper in there before i sealed it exactly what's all in here so we'll go over this i'm not opening it but we'll go over what's in here this way you kind of know and again if you look in the description below you will see an actual list of what's in each medical kit and exactly the quantities in each kit so in this kit we have two large, and you can kind of see them down here. Maybe you'll see them on the back right here. Two large 4x4 gauze pads. Uh, up here, you can see them right there, we have four 2x2 two two gauze pads. So 2 inch by 2 inch, and these ones are 4 inch by 4 inch. So they control your bleeding, control cuts. You can use these to bandage wounds if you have to. In here we have, right there, we have 10 regular sized band-aids five butterfly band-aids. We have four alcohol swabs or wipes. We have, where is it? Right here. We have a four foot roll of medical tape wrapped around a cut up um, old credit card or gift card, I think I used to cut up a card to use in there. So that's a four foot, we got four feet of that tape right there. This way we can use that tape to uh, seal any uh, wounds you might have. This way you don't get it infections. Next we have a little pill pouch right here. In there there are 16 250 milligram ibuprofen tablets and 12 Benadryl tablets. So headaches or anything like that, and pain injuries or allergies got you covered there. There is one pair right here of blue surgical gloves, one face shield right there, and two, you can see them just the tail end of them right here, two large uh, I believe they are three inch by four inch band-aids. They're really big ones you use for like your knee or your leg or something like that. So that's what's in this little medical kit right here. And I went ahead and I vacuum sealed this so it's really super thin. It doesn't take up any room. You can literally just slide it into your bag anywhere. But I did, like I said, I made a nice little list right here of all the items in here. This way, if I ever have to break this out or if I'm with someone and we have to separate for any reason or you know, if I get robbed and this is the only thing I can get out of there, I know what's in here and if I have to give this to someone, they'll know what's in here or if I'm injured and someone needs to use it on me, they can see really quickly what's in here and then they can just rip this open and everything will puff back up and they can get to this kit. So this kit, really simple, uh, only a few dollars, like maybe less than $10 worth of stuff in here. Uh, easy to make, I will have all the information for this below in the uh, description of how to make my mini medical kit. So let's get that one out of here and let's go to my main medical kit. So I have been on the search for a good bag to condense all this into. Um, right now, the way this is, it fits perfectly in the side, the left side of my Kelty Red Wing 50, the left side pouch, um, just like this. So I've kind of just been going with this with the, just the, the thick uh, freezer Ziploc bag. So this is the thicker bag that they make. I haven't found something better yet to use. I would like to get like a Mylar bag or something like that, but I haven't found one that's the right size. Um, Maybe try an A-lock sack is a possibility, but I just haven't been able to get, or haven't get around to ordering one that's gonna be in the right size. So let's go ahead and break this out and we'll go over all the ingredients in it. Ingredients, all the items in it. So the first thing we have right here 
This is, you're like, what is that? This is a skin stapler, actually. This is, it's, um, comes like this when you buy it. It's actually, um, it's clean, um, so you don't have to worry about it. You can literally just rip it out, and I think you get 10 staples in there. Uh, 15, you have 15 staples. So it can be used more than once, but it is, you know, good to go right now, the way that they seal these, so I'm lacking the right word. Sterile, it's sterile for the moment. So it's never been opened, so it's still sterile inside the package. All you do is, let's see if you can see that, you see the staple sticking out right there? Come on. There you go, you can see the staple sticking out. You just put that up against the cut, and then you squeeze right here, and it staples, puts the staple in. So this is really good if you don't know how to suture, but you want to have the ability to suture. Now this is kind of bulky, I'm not gonna lie. It's not exactly the most streamlined little package. It's very odd and bulky. But if you don't know how to do sutures, this is a really great alternative. I picked this up at the last gun show here in Phoenix from a medical supply group that was at the gun show. I think I paid like, I don't know, five or six dollars for this. I actually got a couple of them. But in this kit, I have one. So that's the first item on there. Next item, this is a full roll of Johnson and Johnson medical tape. You know, in the small kit, I have a little four foot roll. In this one, I have a full roll. I've uh, tried to squeeze it down to maybe make it a little more compact and fit a little better, but they're not too cooperative. But this is a full roll of medical tape. This stuff goes fast. You start getting into this and you start using it, it runs out quick. So I wanted a, a full roll. I'm willing to lose a little bit of space to have this size of a roll in my kit. Next thing is a slick tourniquet. This is a tourniquet you can use on your arms or your legs. Um, it's really it's one time use kind of deal. So once you use it, it's on there and it's gonna be covered in blood and you're never gonna use it again. These run about 15 bucks. Now there's another brand out there, the Cat Tourniquet, which is like the really popular one, but they're like 30 something bucks a piece. You know, I got two of these for the price of one of those other tourniquets. So I think this is a really nice option and it comes in a relatively, you know, it's just sealed in plastic. So it's not sterile or anything like that. But it's good, and it's good to have. Uh, there are some videos online of how to use them. You can look it up in Google. It's not too hard. Wrap it around, turn the thing, hook the two sides, and you're good to go. So, a tourniquet. Now, if you don't want this size tourniquet, there is this style of tourniquet you can get. And this is a uh, TK4 rugged combat tourniquet for uh, bleeding. And it's got some instructions right here how to use it. This is basically just a strap with this kind of odd shaped, fish shaped uh, hook on the end that you use. So this is another option. These run about five or six dollars, but this one's not in my kit for obvious reasons. Um, I prefer this style. I just think this is a little bit better than that. It's a little easier to use and a little bit easier to get your hands on when stuff's bloody and wet and I like this better. All right, so next I have one Four by four Israeli bandage. You're like, oh, that's not what they look like. Well, actually when you tear away that gray or white package they come in, they're actually sealed again inside that in this package. So to take a little bit of space up and to get rid of that noisy outer package, I just took it out and stuck it in there. It's a four inch by four inch. You wrap it around and you hook it at the end and this is just another tourniquet, but this is a tourniquet that's attached to a bandage. So this is for bleeding that you can control with this style of bandage. You can kind of see it right there, what it looks like when it's open. There you go. So that's what goes on the outside of the wound and then you wrap it and you hook it through that at the end to lock it in place. So these are it's a little bit of redundancy again, having two different types of tourniquet. This is a bandage tourniquet. This is just a tourniquet. So have both options again redundancy so moving on let's get into just some smaller stuff uh this i have one of them this is a quick clot sport this is a five by five inch uh, i really like the quick clot it's super easy you rip it off you slap it on there you wrap it up you're good to go these things absorb a lot and they're really good at stopping bleeding that's why they have these it's why they're popular this one you can get for about 15 bucks at almost anywhere you can get these on amazon too 
So I like the, having this in there. This is a really nice 5x5 pad in here that'll absorb a lot of blood if you really need to stop bleeding quick. Again, you can wrap this and use it to stop your bleeding. So again, two different options to deal with bleeding. This is a tourniquet pad that'll stop bleeding, and this is just a pad that you're gonna have to wrap with something to help stop bleeding. You can combine these two to do the same as this. So a lot of redundant options in my kits. So in this little mini bag, we have eight, uh, let's see here, there are eight uh, alcohol swabs in here. There are four iodine swabs. There are 10 regular size band-aids two little mini inhalant, uh, snap inhalants, the things you crack to wake someone up if they passed out. And on the back here, I have two uh, different size regular sutures. Now, I do know how to do sutures. I have been trained on how to do them. Uh, I'm not the best at it, and they're gonna be uglier than hell if I have to do them on you, but it's gonna get it, the job done. I have two different sizes. I have a 2-0 suture and a 4-0 suture. I believe the 2-0 is the larger size that you're gonna use for, no, I think it's 4-0 is the larger for uh, extremities and 2-0 is the thinner string for facial and uh, small areas like that. So I have two of those, two different sizes. All right, and like I said, we've got four iodine prep pads. I don't wanna to have to carry a bottle of iodine, so a couple iodine prep pads to clean up any wounds or cuts work really well. Again, I've got 10 regular size band-aids. Let's get in here. Come on. Eight alcohol swabs and two of those little mini inhalants. They're ammonia inhalants is what they specifically are. So let's keep going here. And then again, I have everything kind of mini bag on mini bag. It's kind of a thing, I don't know, kind of OCD like that, have everything kind of put together. So in here, just like in the other one, I have one face shield. I kind of rolled it up in there to try to uh, keep blood out of my face or anything like that. I have one pair of medical gloves. I have actually a full tube of triple antibiotic and pain relief. The maximum strength, the Equate brand, this is I think the Walmart brand. Um, that's where I got it anyways. This is for all your cuts and, cuts and stuff like that, helps it heal a little faster. Nah, doesn't take up much room in my opinion, so it's in there. I got two uh, three by six inch uh, pieces of moleskin. So if you have your heels or blisters or anything like that, you cut it to the shape, throw it on there. Then we have, where are they? We have, these are, what are these? Oh, these are the four by three bandages. These are, they're sterile, they're band-aids. So four inches by three inches. Nice big band-aid for large areas. I've got four of those, I believe. Ah, yep, five of them, okay. Five of those. Then again, we have more two by two gauze pads. I have five two by two gauze pads in here. And then these are the big four by four gauze pads and I have four of those. So we can kind of go over everything one more time. This kit comprised of four 4x4 four four gauze pads, five 2x2s, two four 4x3 four band-aids, six regular band-aids, five butterflies, one 2 suture, one 4 suture, eight alcohol wipes, four iodine wipes, two ammonia inhalants, one tube of triple antibiotic, two 3x6 moleskins pads, pair of gloves, a face shield, a 5x5 quick clot, a slick tournament, tourniquet, a 4x4 four four Israeli bandage, a roll of medical take, and one skin stapler. So again, all this again is in the uh, description below. So this is my main medical kit that rides in the left uh, zipper side pocket of my bug out bag. That's just where I've always had my med kits and that's where I'm always gonna keep my medical kits because when push comes to shove and my adrenaline's pumping, I know to go right there to get it and it's not going to, you know, I don't have to really think, it's just automatic to go to get it. I want to go over a couple of uh, additional options you may want to have in your med kit. I chose not to because I think I have enough things to cover them, but if you want these, these are always really good. These are just um, three inch, I think they're three inch uh, 
just three inch rolls. You can use these to wrap an ankle, wrap an arm. You can make a sling out of these. You know, I just didn't see uh, to have the room or to space to have these in, but these were like a dollar, like, I don't know, like a dollar fifty at the uh, gun show. I picked these up at a medical spot that they have there. So these might be something you may want to consider. You can make splints out of them. You can make a sling out of them. But, you know, they're a little bulky and take up room. So that's an option. If you ever need to render CPR, this is a CPR face shield. Uh, it's just a little face valve right there. It covers their face. You blow through that. It goes into their mouth. Uh, just a little case for it. I think it was supposed to originally be for like a keychain or for outside of your bag or something, but that's an option. Uh, if you don't want to carry the 4x4s and the 2x2s that I have, you can always opt for these. These are H&H uh, &H compression pads. Uh, basically, it's a giant freaking thing of gauze that you can stretch up and wrap with. These only run a dollar, a couple dollars. Uh, these were three bucks a piece. And I got these same medical supply people at the gun shows. So these are an option. They're pretty compact, a little odd because they leave a lot when they vacuum seal them. But again, that's another option. And you saw this earlier, if you don't want the style tourniquet I chose, these are TK4 tournaments, uh, tourniquets. And you can pick these up for five or $6 a piece. These are actually really good. Uh, I think these actually come standard in the Marine IFAC. I believe that's what we had. It's been a while since I've had to use one of those. I've switched away and gone to a different tourniquet just because I prefer a different style. But these are really good. They're very good for size and space constraints and they weigh like an ounce or two so they won't add a whole lot of weight to your pack. So just a couple of things you could add to your medical kit if you so choose to. But like I said, always have options, always have redundancy in your kits. So all right, let's move on to fire starting. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my fire starting kit right here. Yep, kind of big, kind of bulky, but it's good because I have a lot of redundancy and I'm never gonna go without. This is just an Eagle Creek um, packet system, zip lot, zipper bag. I really just liked them. They've got clips on one side. They've got a nice pull. I just stuck this ring on there to add, make it a little easier to open it. So these you can pick up for, you know, I think these are about eight bucks a piece. And I've got several, you'll see them. I chose to use this specifically because I think this is a really good size for all my mini kits that are in my uh, bug out bag system. Like I said, I kind of have OCD and I like to have everything together that does the right function. This way I'm not hunting for things. Also, if you do this, you'll keep your bag very organized and it'll be really easy to find something when you need to get to it in a hurry. So that's why I kind of went with this method. You'll see a whole bunch of these as we go on with all my gear in these little mini packs. So this is my fire starting kit. So the first thing in here and the biggest thing in here is my strike force uh, flint and steel. This thing is massive, pops open like that. You've got your giant striker right here, uh, your steel right here, your ferrocene rod, and this is your striker right here. So you can literally just, this one's brand new. I've only used it like twice uh, just to go outside and test it out and see how it works. Let me do this without making the table. So you kind of got to get that black off to get to it. And you can see it throws a pretty nice spark. So it's nice because it's an all encompassing kit. The other cool thing about this is in the top here, this actually opens um, and you can store some tinder. In here I've got some of the uh, quick tinders. You just uh, fluff these out like they were a cotton ball and they've got their uh, impregnated with I think like Vaseline or something along those lines. And I've got two of those in the top. This way, if I happen to have to only have one thing with me, I can have a starter and something to get the fire going with. That'll take the spark and kind of get everything going. So this is a strike, fi a strike force made by Ultimate Survival Technologies. I think these were about $12, $13. They were less than 15 bucks for one of these at uh, REI when I picked it up. So that's the first option I have for making fire. Let's move into here. The second one 
And I have several of these. I've got just some regular matches. Um, if anything happens to that, I've got the same thing in a little zipper bag with the fire, the striker in there. So these are a little more concealed and a little more protected than that is. Along the lines of creating fire, I also have a flint and steel. So you shave off this edge, the magnesium, onto the ground, make a little pile of it using the back of your knife. And then you flip it over and you strike down on the striker, get your spark and the magnesium ex ignites and explodes and creates your little fire. So another option. Then of course the trusty handy Bic lighter. Always got to have these. I think I have two of them actually in here. Got two Bic lighters in there. So as you can see, we've got a striker, flint and steel. We've got another magnesium one. I got two different match options and two lighters. So I have four different ways right there to start a fire. So if one of those fails, I still have three more options if I really need it. Now, God forbid, all of this fails me and I have no other way of making a fire. I have this. You can get these at Walgreens for about $3. This is a lighted um, magnifying glass. So you remember back in the day, you kind of get it focused and you know, idiots that burn dance. I didn't do that personally, but I have I had friends that did it. You can focus this into a beam. It takes a little while, but if all else fails and it's the only way you have to start a fire, the little uh, mag magnifying glass will do what it needs to do. Also, it's got a little light in it. So you can see if all else fails and you need a little light at night, it's here, it's not very bright, but it's a little backup light, God forbid. So those are all my methods of starting a fire. So let's move on to fire accelerants, things that'll help keep your fire going and get it going. So this is just a little bag that something came in full of dryer lint. Throw some dryer lint down there, this stuff burns and it's really cheap. You have tons of it every time you do your laundry. So I have a giant box of it. I use it all the time. Every time I go camping, I always have a thing of this. Nine times out of 10, I use this to get my fire started and it really works. So dryer lint. So more of these quick tinder, uh, little uh, alcohol, um, Vaseline uh, impregnated sponges. What you do is you take one out, you, you, you tear it apart and turn it into like a big giant puff ball uh, and you put it in there with there and that'll take your spark and it'll burn for about 30, 40 seconds to help get your kindling started. So another option for accelerants. And a third option for accelerants, and anyone been in the military knows these, trioxane bars. So. These are, get these in MREs and things like that, but it's not the best option, but well, it'll work. Break it off, get your, your spark on it. it, it's nice. These come in little three packs uh, normally when you order them online, but I think it's like four or five bucks for a three pack. I've got lots of them. So I stuck three in there, so another accelerant option. So let's move that out of the way. The last thing I have in here, and you may know these, these are the little Esbit. Uh, fire fire um, sources. This is the little Esbit stove. It's made in Germany. These are the little things, uh, little fire sources. So in the stove, I've got four more. So I have a total of six of these little uh, fire sources. You just set this down, open this up, put it on there. You create your fire and you put your uh, your uh, compass or your thermos or your cook pot right on top of that it doesn't it does take a while to create a uh, get a water boiling with one of these but in a pinch if you don't want to make a big fire and you're trying to be more concealed and uh, a little more covert this is a really great option it's super tiny it doesn't take up really any room the other nice thing about this is if you're not going to use it for the stove, if you're going to create a regular fire, you can actually flip this over, set this into your coals or your fire, and you can use this and put stuff on top of it to cook and use this kind of as a stove to cook on. I've done that as well with other ones that I have. These you can get online. They are about $10 on Amazon. They, I saw one the other day. $9.99, you get this and you get six of these little fuel so fuel uh, fuel tablets that go with it. So guys, this 
is my fire kit. I have lots of options, multiple accelerant options, multiple ways to start my fire. So push comes to shove, this is going to get me where I need to go with it. I can contain all of that in this very small, I think this is about five inches by about eight inch wide pouch. This is my little fire starting kit. So I hope this helps you guys. I'll go over exactly what's in it one more time. And again, like the medical kits, the description will be in the bottom. So we have matches. We have our flint and steel. Two different options for that. We have six S-Bit fuel tabs. We have one S-Bit mini camp stove. We have 10, two, four, six, eight, 10. Um, quick tinder bundles. I actually have 12 because there's two more in the top of this little uh, strike fire, fire starting steel. Uh, one baggie of dryer lint, three trioxane fuel bars, and one magnification glass with light. So this is the second video in my series of building the ultimate bug out bag. I hope this has been helpful to you. We will continue with another video soon in the series. I believe the next video will be covering communication and personal hygiene. So that's the next video to come. This has been medical kits and fire starting. The next video coming is communication and personal hygiene. So I look forward to uh, hearing from you guys. Please leave comments. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me, private message me, ask me in the comments. I will answer all your questions. I really want this to be out there to help as many people as, you, as I can. I have done, like I said, months of research on putting together the best kit, the most condensed kit that is gonna save your tail when shit hits the fan, when WROL happens, when you know you got a bug out as a last resort. So I hope this has been helpful. Please uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I look forward and I enjoy hearing from you guys. So as always, Semper Fi, have a good day. So you best not cross that line. If you want this gun, you gotta come through us and take it. One shot at a time. Urge. Uh, I believe they are three inch by four inch band-aids. The really big ones you use for like your knee or your leg or something like that. So that's what's in this little medical kit right here. And I went ahead and I vacuum sealed this so it's really super thin. It doesn't take up any room. You can literally just slide it into your bag anywhere. But I did, like I said, I made a nice little list right here of all the items in here. This way, if I ever have to break this out or if I'm with someone and we have to separate for any reason or, you know, if I get robbed and this is the only thing I can get out of there, I know what's in here. And if I have to give this to someone, they'll know what's in here. Or if I'm injured and someone needs to use it on me, they can see really quickly what's in here and then they can just rip this open and everything will puff back up and they can get to this kit. So this kit, really simple, uh, only a few dollars, like maybe less than $10 worth of stuff in here. Uh, easy to make, I will have all the information for this below in the uh, description of how to make my mini medical kit. So let's get that one out of here and let's go to my main medical kit. So I have been on the search for a good bag to condense all this into. Um, right now, the way this is, it fits perfectly in the side, the left side of my Kelty Red Wing 50, the left side pouch, um, just like this. So I've kind of just been going with this with the, just the, the thick uh, freezer Ziploc bag. So this is the thicker bag that they make. I haven't found something better yet to use. I would like to get like a Mylar bag or something like that, but I haven't found one that's the right size. Um, maybe try an A-Lock set. Come and take all right southern republic back at you again with part two of my ultimate bug out bag build so in the last video we talked about choosing the right bag and the concept of redundancy so we're going to take that concept of redundancy and we're going to transition into my medical kits. 
Again, medical kits, redundant, more than one. So let's start here. So we got one kit, two kits. So we're gonna start with what I call my mini medical kit. And as you can see here, it is, I don't know what do you call it, um, vacuum sealed. So I went ahead and I actually wrote on here, put a piece of paper in there before I sealed it, exactly what's all in here. So we'll go over this, I'm not opening it, but we'll go over what's in here, this way you kind of know. And again, if you look in the description below, you will see an actual list of what's in each medical kit and exactly the quantities in each kit. So in this kit, we have two large, and you can kind of see them down here, maybe I'll see them on the back right here, two large 4x4 four four gauze pads. Uh, up here, you can see them right there, we have four two by two gauze pads, so two inch by two inch, and these ones are four inch by four inch. So they control your bleeding, control cuts, you can use these to bandage wounds if you have to. In here we have, right there, we have 10 regular sized band-aids, five butterfly band-aids, we have four alcohol swabs or wipes, we have, where is it, right here, we have a four foot roll of medical tape wrapped around a cut up um, old credit card or gift card, I think I used a cut up a card to use in there. So that's a four foot, we got four feet of that tape right there. This way we can use that tape to uh, seal any uh, wounds you might have this way you don't get infections. Next we have a little pill pouch right here. In there there are 16 250 milligram ibuprofen tablets and 12 Benadryl tablets. So headaches or anything like that, and pain injuries or allergies, got you covered there. There is one pair right here of blue surgical gloves, one face shield right there, and two, you can see them just the tail end of them right here, two large